Despite there being some damage to the internals of the oil pump, it's really not that bad, so we're going to reuse it. The oil pump seal is not included in any of the kits from ID Parts or anything, so I got a brand new one from Mercedes. Only goes in one way, and that will seal the oil pump output. With our new seal in place, we can go ahead and get this mounted onto the block. We're going to set it down, uh, not bolt it down just yet. We're going to take the chain. Uh, this is the old chain we're going to reuse. It's going to slide over that crank sprocket, again, to the, to the back gear. We'll push the oil uh, uh, chain tensioner out of the way, slide that around the sprocket, bring that up. We'll just kind of tilt the oil pump forward a little bit so we can engage the chain in the sprocket. And once that's done, we'll have that chain installed and we'll be ready to bolt it down, just like so. Now we'll put the splash seal in place, throw the oil pump on there, and we'll go ahead and get the oil pump bolts in. So we'll just put those in finger tight, like so, and then once they're in like that, we'll run them down with this tool, get them, again, just finger tight. Then we'll get out the inch-pound torque wrench and torque those bolts to about 168 inch-pounds, whatever that is in metric. Now we'll put the bolts onto the oil pan shield, or the crank shield. Those uh, are going to go in uh, with your torque wrench. 80 inch pounds is the order of the day. No particular order uh, as far as I'm aware. So we'll just go around, get those torqued down, and we'll move on to the next step. Next step is to clean out the lifter so we can install those in the head. Uh, some of these were kind of locked into place. They wouldn't... Uh, you move at all. Others were not, but they all were kind of full of nasty black oil, so I just wanted to clean them out. You could replace all these. Um, I mean, you know, you could argue that you probably should, but again, you know, I'm, I'm already into this thing for a lot, so we're trying to get this uh, done without going too crazy. Anyway, uh, I'm using a little piece of wire to kind of stick through the hole in the top of the lifter to kind of get in there, break loose the oil that's in there, and uh, and get it all out. So when you're done, I'm kind of coming out, and you can see that wire's all nasty and black, and then we just kind of pump that through the, uh, the, uh, the lifter right into the rag and get all the old nasty oil out and have it all good and cleaned up and ready to go in. And then this part is simple. Just keep the lifters separate. So I've, I've kept track of which one goes where, uh, which is why they're all in order. Uh, coat it in oil, pump it up a few times, and then uh, just drop it right into its spot, right where it belongs. Uh, that's all there is to it. The rocker arms are the same process as the lifters. Clean them up real well. Again, I've marked which one went to which valve on which cylinder on which head. And we're just going to bathe them in oil after cleaning them up. Make sure they're good and lubricated. We'll put assembly lube on before the cover goes on, of course. But for now, let's just make sure we'll get it good and lubricated. We'll drop it into place where it belongs, like so. Get all that oil off. There we are. And you do have to make sure that it clicks into place. So this one was giving me a little bit of trouble, but it'll go just like click like that. On to the timing chain. This can be a very frustrating process if your timing chain is stretched. Mine was, it wasn't stretched to the point of failure, uh, but it was stretched far enough that it was very frustrating. So I got a brand new timing chain. This is one that came already assembled. I did not need to put a master link in it. This was uh, a whole chain from the factory. So I fished it up into the uh, right side. On the right side, the timing chain goes on the uh, sprocket at the end of the intake gear. On the other side, on the uh, left side of the engine, it actually goes to the uh, sprocket on the exhaust cam. So just a little, little bit of a difference there. Not that it matters. The other big difference between the right and the left sides is that the right side, at top dead center, has open valves, which means you need to push against the valve springs in order to get the cams in place, which can be a little bit difficult. Uh, the left side, on the other hand, all of those valves are closed, so it doesn't really matter where the cams are, the lobes aren't um, under any sort of pressure. So we'll start on the right side, uh, right here. We're going to get the cams lined up, and we're going to line the timing chains uh, kind of colored link up with the timing mark on the sprocket just uh, it's not necessarily you know that important but 
It's a good reference point just to visually make sure that everything's where it needs to be. If you don't have those, I wouldn't sweat it. I, I just figured it if I uh, if I could set it up like this where I'd have some visual indication, it would just make the process go a little faster. And frankly, I don't think I really noticed one way or the other. So once that side's set, we'll go ahead and fish that timing chain back up into the uh, left side head. Uh, just kind of pull right up through the front case there with that, uh, that metal tool and just, you know, being careful not to damage anything and not to uh, get it uh, uh, wrapped up into the timing chain guides or anything. Once that's up there, we can go ahead and, again, make sure it's on the right path all the way through the, the front of the engine. And I have the sprocket all disconnected from the exhaust cam. So we're going to put the sprocket on and it only goes back on one way. There's a little locating dowel um, and we'll go ahead and put it all together. So that uh, exhaust cam's in, there goes the intake cam and we will get those lined up with each other as well, like so. So once that's all together, you'll notice the tensioner is not installed. So there's plenty of slack in the chain. We'll go back and make sure that everything is, is aligned properly uh, with the chain. This is my version of the Mercedes special cam hold down tool. I made it actually out of composite decking. Um, I had two of them. One of them is no good. So I'm, I'm working with a single one and, and it works. So ordinarily you would put two of those on. They would hold the cams down, right? You would use those actually to cinch the cams down. <laughs> Uh, to compress the springs, and then you could put the lockdown tabs on and so on and so forth. Well, in this case, I had to put it on the back so that I could put the back locking tabs in and then move it to the front so I could put the front locking tabs in because, again, I only had the one. Um, it probably puts a little more stress on those cams than maybe there should be, but um, I've heard of plenty of people just doing this with nothing but the lockdowns um, and, and not using the, the special tools at all, so I figured that's probably a little bit better. Once that's all on there, we need to hold this cam in place as we get everything adjusted, because again, this is under pressure from the, um, from the, uh, from the valve springs. Uh, you can use a uh, vice grips, uh, or what I did is I put a little piece of uh, aluminum along the block, clamped it down, and stuck it between the, uh, the teeth of the cam gear. So that is gonna hold that cam in place. And now I can come over here and make sure I have everything lined up on the other side of the engine, on the left side of the engine. So we'll get the cam gear attached. Now obviously it's a, a little bit tricky, but we make sure that we want all of the slack in this chain to be uh, going in a um, clockwise direction, right? Because our tensioner is over there as the chain feeds um, up into the um, right side of the uh, the engine. So we want to pull all the slack from you know where it comes down out of the right side head, up into the balance shaft, up into the uh, left side head and, and no slack there and then we come down out of the left side head and we can start to pull that slack down all the way down to the timing gear off of the uh, off of the crankshaft and then it'll be a little bit droopy between the crankshaft and going up to the right side head and that's okay because that's where our tensioner is going to go in and hold it tight so really this is just a fiddly process to to get that in place and once it is uh, and you have your, your screws into the cam gears there. We can go ahead and put the intake cam in place. And there we go. So now we're just going to adjust that chain down. And once we have all the slack down on the other side of the crank sprocket and we have everything lined up, we can install our tensioner um, slide or tensioner guide uh, as it were and just slide it up into the engine. So right there is, the, oh, hold that out of the way, and we're gonna run this tensioner right up in there. See how much slack is in there? That's pretty much the way it's supposed to be. Again, this is a brand new chain. So the tensioner will go up, and it'll actually go in pretty easily. You shouldn't have to fight it. The tensioner itself takes a little more effort to go in. Now I'm running the impact socket, but not actually hammering away at it, just using it to spin it a little bit. And once I've done that, 
Now everything is nice and tight, and it's looking good. The next thing we have to do is we have to lock our cams in place on the left side. Remember uh, that our um, left side cams or our left side valves are all closed so they're not pushing against the cams but before we try to rotate the engine we do need to make sure those are locked down so you just put those four uh, locking straps in throw the um, uh, the bolts in get them torqued down and keep the engine straight up and down and that will help us to find our first timing mark the balance shaft right there circled that little notch should be vertical straight up and down with the engine I've repainted the mark for the zero degrees top dead center down there on the bottom in the bottom circle. And we see that that lines up. And over here, our little dot lines up with the case of the head. And on the left side, same thing. It's all lined up and ready to go. The bolts that hold the timing sprocket to the cams on each side of the engine need to be torqued to 159 inch pounds, which is 18 newton meters in uh, metric units for my international friends. It's not a lot of force, so no need to hold anything down to keep the cam from spinning. The force of the valve springs will uh, take care of that for you. All those bolts, though, are not uh, positioned above the head, so we can only do the top two on each cam. To get to that bottom bolt, you're going to need to rotate the engine so the missing bolts are visible and accessible from the top, like so. Once you can get to those bolt holes, you can put those bolts in, and those also get torqued to 159 inch pounds of force. Like so. To install the pins uh, for the timing rails, I'm going to use the same tool I used to extract them. Instead of using the slide hammer, though, I'll uh, screw that into the pin, and I'll just use the regular hammer just to uh, tap it in like so. Next up, we need to install the front main seal and the timing cover. I've got a brand new seal that's going to go in, came with the kit, and set it in place. Make sure it's very level and nice and even. We want to drive it in evenly with the seal driver. So I'm just going to tap that in. Not going real hard and heavy on it, just nice and gentle, just tapping it in. And eventually it will be almost flush. Once it's really close to flush, I've got another seal driver that's basically the same size as that little ring there uh, uh, that's in the case and I can use that to tap it in and level it out so now it's all good and level uh, on the front looks good there and not boogered up on the back once the seals installed now we put the gasket on so the gasket is actually a sealant so this is the sealant that was provided with the kit you can use the official Mercedes sealant uh, I imagine there's probably some other options you can use something oil safe of course and we're just going to go ahead and follow the pattern. Now the pattern's in WIS, so you know, look for that to make sure you're following the, the right pattern. But roughly speaking, it's going to look kind of like this. Take your time, but don't take too much time because, of course, this stuff will start to set up pretty quickly. You don't have uh, all day on it, but you know, make sure you get good coverage. Uh, we want to be careful that we don't get our line of sealant all munged up. So I'm very carefully holding this back from the surface of the engine while I put the bolts in to make sure it, it hangs correctly. I think at the factory they use the locating dowels to kind of stick it on and hold it in place. But uh, WIS says you're supposed to take those locating dowels out, throw them away, uh, because they say that it can cause leaks. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how or why, but there you go. So we're going to put on uh, the bolts, get them in there finger tight, and now we've got the crank pulley that can go on. We have to be careful as we install that because, number one, it needs to be keyed up correctly, and number two, we don't want to munge that brand new seal we just put in. So now we get those uh, bolts installed again, finger tight, no big deal, and once they're finger tight, we're going to torque those things down. When we tighten these down, we're not going to tighten them very much. We're going to seven foot pounds, which is nine Newton meters, which is, um, let's see, uh, that's going to be a, a giant 84 inch pounds uh, to put those in at. No specific pattern is specified, but you're going to find that this little bolt right here is behind this uh, idler pulley and you can't really get to it. Um, I didn't want to take the idler pulleys out, so I'm using an 8mm ratcheting wrench right there and just kind of sneaking that in like that. 
That's all we're going to cover on this particular installment, but uh, in part 10, coming soon, we're going to go ahead and get the head covers installed. We're going to track parts down to the junkyard. We're going to make sure that the fuel pump and injectors go in and um, really just kind of start making this thing look like an engine. So uh, hopefully we'll see you back here next time. Thanks for watching.